Well met everyone, I am Rich Delich, and today I'd like to take you through the exact process that I go through when I am preparing and creating my D&D session. So this isn't specific to just world building, it is not specific to the creation of any sort of creative thing, a publishing thing, a book, whatever I'm trying to make and journey into in the D&D space. This is specific to, I've got a session coming up, what is the process that I go through? What do I wrangle in to be able to take my creative flow, rhythm, and process, and just my creativity in general, and how do I kind of narrow it down and get it to something that I can bring to the table in order to get my players through a session? This is my way. It's just the way that I do things. It's how I flow. It's not the best way. It's not the only way. But hopefully there may be something here that if you're a dungeon master, you may be able to pick apart a few pieces and maybe it might help you in your creative process and help you not be as overwhelmed when you're trying to bring something really cool, exciting, and entertaining to your gaming group. If you're not a dungeon master, if you're just a player, there may be something here that might be able to be used for those that are just being creative and using it as some sort of a process to help you confine the creativity a bit. I know that can be sort of a, a very, not a recommended topic, I guess, where you don't want to confine and restrict creativity. I talk about that in everything I make and build. But there has to be a point where you need to eventually just get some things done. And the way that you can find sort of a practical sort of checklist that you can start working through so that you can actually take your creativity and produce something. The world pays attention to those that actually produce and create some finished product. Those that are insanely creative, massively artistic, that have wonderful ideas, as big and flighty as those ambitions may be. If you're not able to find some tangible practical system that you can work through to actually get something finished, no one is going to know the and see the wonders of your creativity. So let's do this, okay? So I'm going to look at Bugbear in Wikipedia, okay? You'll notice in Wikipedia, right, the free online encyclopedia, there's all these blue things, these links. Have you ever done this, okay? I call it Wikipedia hell, or I call it going down the YouTube rabbit hole, okay? Where a bugbear is a legendary creature. You just click on that. Somewhere in here, what the hell is the vegetable lamb of Tartary? Cool, and then it goes to fruit. Now, I know I'm going through it quickly, but the point is, what's going to happen is over the course of two hours, you suddenly find that you are... <clears throat> I'm just clicking. I'm clicking. <laughs> okay. So I'm clicking. I'm clicking. And we'll keep going. All right. I'm at the National Health Service. Two hours in. The NHS in England, NHS Scotland, NHS Wales, and the affiliated Health and Social Care in Northern Ireland were established together in 1948 as one of the major social reforms following the Second World War. <gasps> this is how our mind works. And what happens is two hours later, and the same thing can happen with YouTube, you suddenly find and you wonder, how the hell did I get here? And that is how the mind can go off on those tangents. That is how the rambling and just the clutter in your head can go. How did I get into studying World War II, which can take me down for months of research, every one of these things I click on, right? They all have their own Wikipedia page. But how the hell did I get, how the hell did I get from where I was to here? Now what I start to do, and it's a sort of a fun experiment, is three hours in, start hitting the back button. National Health Service, a generic drug. Clomiphene into in vitro. But I got there from gestational age. I got there from the stall intestine. I got there from psyllium. Is the common name used for several members of the plant genus Plantago, which I got there from husk, which got there from seeds, which started as a spore. I went from fruit into spore. 
before I got to fruit, I was in the Vegetable Lamb of Tartary, which is a legendary zoo fight, which, see, already, even on video, I can click on this. It's an animal that visually represents a plant. That's kind of cool. That sounds fantastical and D&D-ish. But how did I get into the Vegetable Lamb? I simply clicked on Legendary Creature. But I started the whole thing with a bugbear. That is what can happen during gameplay sessions. So I want to show you just a little bit of ways to allow the flighty creative bits because that's what creates the interest and that's what makes your session, your game planning, yours because you get to kind of work within the way that you flow in your rhythm and your artistic nature. But you need to wrangle things in. So the first thing I will do is I always open up Microsoft Word. If I was to pull up a few different files here, you will see that what I have is a bunch of sessions. Session two. Here's what I wrote for my second session. Okay, I can go here and find session four. Okay, that's what I wrote. So what I will first do is I pull up Microsoft Word. That is my software of choice. Use anything you want, Google Docs, something you can write down, right? I will first write down, say the session is today, which is, I'm moving around because my keyboard is underneath my mic. 19 August 2019, okay? Boom. So I always do this a little bit as well. I just like to kind of, I talk about the, in all of my reviews, right? I always talk about how, readability, the visuals of something matters. So this just helps me kind of, uh, session five, let's say. This helps me kind of get some good visuals and makes it look good. Then what I will do is I will go in-game start. I will say, I think we are at like March 13th, 10,076, Zal Concordant. I'm playing in Ravnica. It uses, it says that you can use the normal months in our real calendar. So the reason why I always make sure that I put this down here like this is this lets me know when PCs ask, dude, we, did we get EXP two weeks ago? Well, yeah, but we fought that one giant. No, you didn't fight the giant last session. Putting the date, the real, li real time date of when the session is going to happen helps you start keeping some consistency in your notes and things you can go back to. As far as in date or in time start, I should say, whatever you want to call it. The reason why I record time when we start, I'll oftentimes do an end time like this, is so that things in game matter through the course of time. If the PCs say, hey, where we're supposed to meet that NPC two weeks from now, like how much time do we have? Do we have any downtime for me to go research that at the ancient library? So on and so forth. By keeping consistency with time, it helps keep the flow and rhythm of your world good. So the best way to do that is, I simply say, there is my in time start. So today we're starting on the morning of morning. All right, folks, you know, we take about 20, 30 minutes BSing, shooting the shit, talking about movies and whatever was exciting. All right, you ready? All right, let's start. So we are starting today's session on the morning of the 13th of March in the year 10,076 ZC, which is Zal Concordant. Basically, they would know, right? Timeline wise of Ravnica, whatever your world is. This just happens to mean that it's after the signing of the Guild Pact, I think. So then what I will do is I will do a sort of start or a setup, if you will. This happened. That happened. You said you wanted to do this or that. This is sort of the recap. Okay, guys, if you remember last session, what happened is we did this, this, this. I'll try and go a little bit in order. Towards the end of the session, you guys got into a fight with that one NPC, and then the PC almost died, and then like two people had to be healed, and you give it a little bit of a refresher, right? I often have my wife, who takes really good notes. Sometimes I'll have some people just read off, hey, can you just let everyone know what's going on? Obviously, the recap is also very important because not only does it get everyone invested into the now, like, okay, it's time to start messing around. Let's get into the session. Let's start. It's sort of the, the bell has rung. It's time to go. But also it helps those that, of course, that have missed the previous session. So you can kind of recover or, or recap for them and let them know what has occurred. So I always have this little start section where it is, as I said, just the recap, but it's also for me as the DM as well. It helps me remember this is where we are. Now, here's the important point, and this is the most important thing you can do. Getting through the session. You can call it anything you want. I will do this. Okay? And then, 
I will then put bullet points down. And the reason why I bullet is you bullet point your creativity. And what that does is it enables you to avoid the little example I did there with going through the Wikipedia links. My mind is wandering. It's all over the place. Let me back up just a little bit. As a dungeon master, I run 10 players, so I have a bit of a unusual situation. I know my players very well. They're family members. They're people I've played with for 20 plus years. This is my fourth consecutive campaign. It's pretty much since 5th edition came out in late 2014, I think. I've run this group basically every two weeks. So I'm very familiar with my table and the group and just the personalities of people. As I said, my son plays, my wife plays. So they're human beings that I know better than anyone else on the planet. I know that they like combat. So I have to kind of start to wrangle in the session and figure out what I want to do based on what works at my table. I don't care how good Matt Mercer's Critical Role is, how good the Nentier Veil and all that stuff at D&D Beyond is. I don't care who's running what. I don't care what DMs might be better. You are, and be confident in this, you are the best dungeon master for your group. What I will do is I do not like to railroad my players. I present a night of gameplay. We play from, by the time we're done messing around, 5.30 to about 11.30 to midnight, right? So we're gaming for six to six and a half hours. Let's call it a flat six hours. My goal is just to get my group through six hours of gameplay in an interesting, challenging, but most importantly, fun and entertaining manner. If I can do that, I'll just, I'll you know, those sessions will springboard off of one another and overall they'll form a campaign. I don't think the big campaign story arc ahead of time because what happens if everything I want to do is just what I want to do? It's what excites me. I'm excited about the game. I'm not always, I may be excited about the story, but I'm not invested in it. I've been a DM for about 30 years and one thing I've learned and it takes some time and sometimes it's just the maturity of you as a person To be able to let the pride and the ego and just what I always say is let the players shit all over your content and your world. It is about them. It has to always be about them. Okay, make it about the players. Facilitate, keep things moving, always keep good rhythm, keep good pacing and flow. I talk about that all the time, but let it all be about them. So all I'm trying to do is just get through a six hour session. So what I will do is I will start to bullet point. When I bullet point here, and I'll show you you know, on screen, I'll write some things down just for example. I'm not trying to think about the order of do you, know, do you have to present it to your players during the session in bullet point order. Go in any way you want, but I do the bullet points first. So what I'm going to think of is I'm going to think of a train fight. I did this last session, okay? And then, and then I will put the bullet point because just seeing it tells me that I'm now creating little checkpoints that my mind can now let go of the train fight and I'm just thinking about the bullet point, the next one, and then later I'll go back through it and start being creative and use my skill as a craftsman and artist. You know, even if there's no actual art involved of drawing of anything, I'll now let my sort of storytelling sense go through the bullet points. But until you figure out your bullet points, And then kind of look over them and figure out how long will those bullet points take and will they take me through a six-hour session? You can go down that long rabbit hole or the Wikipedia hell and just keep going and you're never going to quantify and sort of find any brackets to anything. So I want a train fight. We have to introduce a new character because someone died. And then we have to introduce a new NPC. And then we have to detail out the current location and the PC's safe house area. That's it. Okay. What I'm going to do is I know with 10 players, uh, some of this is going to come from experience. No matter how much I can explain this to you, if you don't, if, if you're just not familiar with your group and how you run and the type of things that bog down sessions, the type of things that take you longer than normal, over 30 years of doing it and then with the same group, like I said, since 5th edition started, I know about how long a fight's going to take. This train fight with a group of 10, we have more initiative counts to go through. I know any combat is going to be an hour and a half, maybe two hours, okay? Assuming it's a, it's a well thought out encounter. Also, 
because of my table and, and the group, I know they love combat. It doesn't always have to be there, but if they can fight at least once a session, they're usually going to be happy. So I always want to try and bullet point in a fight somewhere. As I said, that train fight could be the fourth bullet point. It doesn't have to be in any specific order. But that's it. Once I have that, here's what I do now, is I just do a save, and I label it in the same way that I was just doing with everything else. Okay, if I go in here and I have my little folder, and then I go into Ravnica, and then I go into Sessions, you see I have session one, two, three, four. For example, I can go session five. I keep my labeling the same and consistent. And then whatever the date of the gameplay session is, blah, blah, blah. I'll save it. So that way, next session, when I go back, I can see what was done when and where and how, right? Once I save it, it's a very freeing moment because it tells me that I have detailed in the Wikipedia hell right? I clicked on that link and that link and that link and that link. But look how many I clicked on without intending to. These, these four bullet points now tell me those are the only four links I'm going to click on. And once I save it and I've labeled it as session 5, 19 August 2019, I now can just focus on those four points and nothing else because I've already thought through a little bit and it may take you five minutes. As I said, you have to kind of figure out through experience what's going to work. I've already detailed out that those four things might get, get me through a six hour session. Okay. So now what I do is I just simply go, if this is number one, train fight. I'm now going to use these notes for myself. What do I need? I need a, I need terrain. I need a map, some sort of a layout on the table, right? I need minis. I need um, stat cards for monsters. I need music. That's it. Notice I'm sort of creating little mini, and I could do it that way. I can go like this instead. See that? And then what I'll do is there's number one, and we'll go here, and we'll put it in nice big bold so it's its own little thing. And then I will go bullet point like this, like this like that. And that is what we have, right? So we have terrain and map and minis, stat cards and music. Now, with these things, you may need to think through these a little more, take a little more time than I am here on camera in the order of these things, right? And the reason why is let's say I may have minis come after stat cards because I'm going to think through, okay, I have some terrain, I need a map, I need minis, but I may kind of look through here first in D&D Beyond and say, "Ooh, I want a black dragon. But now I'm have, I have the stat card here, and now that's going to inform me of what miniatures I need, right? So certainly the order here can be flip-flopped, but even though I talk about flip-flopping the order, here's the best thing you can do. Let me back up a little bit and sort of refresh and show you how we got here. So we're going to try and get through a session, right? We have a train fight, okay? Now, even though this order of these four bullet points. That's all I need to use to get through. I don't wanna think about anything else other than these four things to get me through a six hour session. Even though I don't have these necessarily in order, meaning I may not have the train fight be the first thing that my PCs do, you want to then detail them out and then work linearly, okay? There is a very, very amazing creative individual. I support him on Patreon. He's got his own YouTube videos, all this other stuff. His name is Runehammer. He is, I think he's the most brilliant creative individual that possibly I've ever met or I've ever interacted with in any capacity, right? Whether I've never met them or not. The big thing with him is he just does a wonderful job of being insanely creative, but he has some really good processes that I've learned a lot from that help me take my Wikipedia hell down the rabbit hole YouTube mind and wrangle it into something to actually start producing something. That's how I've, I've been able to do 50 plus videos is I can, I can sit and think forever about what videos I want to create, but thinking about the videos isn't going to actually get a video done, right? And it's the same process, thinking through the session, thinking about the next session and the next session isn't going to help you get through the first two hours of the coming session when your friends show up in three hours with beer and beer, beer, ah, uh, pizza, beer and pretzels, right? So think and go through this linearly. When I say think linearly, linearly and go through it in that manner, 
do everything related to your terrain first. Until that is completely done, then you work on the map. Then you work on your minis. Or like I said, this could have been reversed, right? Stat cards or minis. Then I find my music. What will happen is from the creative aspect, somewhere in my terrain, I do it a lot when I draw, right? I'm drawing and I'm all... Sound effects make me draw better, okay? And I'm drawing all these little bits. Anything, if you've seen any of my fun fight videos from way back, you know what I mean. But as I'm making those sound effects, it can be very difficult to not just open up Spotify and start putting on some music. You start looking through music. Next thing you know, you're like, well, where are my headphones? You know, you get it. And it ends up being 20 minutes later and you haven't started on your freaking map yet because you're worried about whether the music soundtrack is right or whatever. So work linearly. Not only do I have these five bullet points for train fight, down here I may have number two, introduce new PC. I may have blah, blah, and blah. Right? I may have three things with that. So you have to get through all of these things in your prep time and get it ready, okay? And sometimes you can combine two things. Like there may be a, a, a website where it's like, what is it? Two minute tabletop, I think. Take a look at this guy, right? Awesome uh, Patreon and stuff like this, right? Whatever, whether you buy it, purchase it, whatever, right? But I have these type of things. So that's the terrain, okay? If I was to just print screen this and bring this into Photoshop, that's going to, this will now allow me to finish both my terrain and my map, right? I need a map of the overall layout, but this is also what is going to be on the table that they're going to fight with. I need the map for me to look at so I can reference where's the bad guys, where's the good guys, so on and so forth, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go like this, and then I'll create this. We'll go in here. We'll take this map. I know this is, I'm not trying to say it's my map. I'm not trying to steal this guy's work. I'm just doing a demo. So there's the map. We'll bring this brush down like this and go boom. Put it over the top. See what I mean? It's not precise, but you get it. Right? So we're like that. Okay? And then I can take this thing and edit, rotate it. Boom. You see where we're going with that. I'm now creating gridded combat. I can print this out put it on the table, and I have now have my map and my terrain both, so I'm ready to go. My minis are going to go on top of that, okay? Stat cards, very simple. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to use D&D &D Beyond. I'm going to go through my little game rules or wherever you get it from. You can type in, honestly, like 5E Zombie. It's free, guys. You know, right there. Take this thing, or just take this thing, whatever, right? So that guy, I'll print screen. You've seen me do this before. Bring it in here. Boom. Take him. Control V. Bring this down. There's my little stat card. And then I know they're going to fight 11 of them. So what I'll do over here is I'll just write one, two, three, four. Right? See how that works? And then that's my little hit point trackers. And then underneath I'll write down... 13 hit points, 13 hit points, and then I'll use this as my cheat sheet to refer to when they start hitting them, blah, 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 right? But now that's it. This is done. My, and then, well, I need 11 Aarakocra looking guys, so I'll find the miniatures in my thing. Ooh, cool. Now, during this fight, I need to pull up Spotify, and I need to find the music. And as soon as I'm ready to go, and then maybe is I'll just kind of check through in my head. Terrain's done, map's done, minis are done, stat cards are done, music is done. But what I've now done is I've just gotten through... Bullet point number one, again, doesn't matter the order, but I've gotten through about an hour and a half of gameplay. Done. It's prepped. Introduce new PC. Here's where you start walking through, or a new NPC, let's say. Here's where I start walking through. What's his name? Yeah, I may go through and reference stuff that I already have. The big book of names. All right. Well, his, na the, his name is going to be Patron. Cool. Blah, blah, blah. He'll go here. Patron. What are his... You know, and then you just start going through your process. What are his wants? Goals? Ambi whatever. Same stuff. Ambition. Why does he help the group? What is his storyline? 
any hooks and leads, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But, and then maybe, you know, you might, well, where does he live? What does that look like? But maybe here, there's another bullet point that says, what's his home area like? You see what I mean? But then now I do that and now I go into Photoshop and I start drawing in a little map of what it looks like. Or I get in here and I'm like, well, let's say DND &D Village. And then I go to images. You're doing this for your table. It doesn't matter that someone else has already done it, right? But I can just, okay, this is good enough. And then I'll take this thing and then I'll, you know, copy it, open image, a new tab, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll just you know, get rid of the letters and I'll name it, that's Patron's home and here's his little area and they're gonna walk in from this part. You see what I mean? But all of a sudden you're seemingly just so prepared and you have everything ready. But unless you did these bullet points ahead of time, right here, I may start looking at that map beforehand, not even knowing if that's something that I'm gonna use at my table today. You know what I mean? And what it does though is or at least how I do it, is once I get all these things done, I have it laid out, I leave it as is. How my players react to each of these individual things. The events that happen, whether, I t if I TPK the group during train fight and that's the second thing I do, I'm not getting to the other stuff. The session ends and it's like, well guys, we got three hours left of game time, let's make some new characters, let's talk about the next world or the next campaign, right? But what it does is it keeps it free. It keeps you able to prepare, but also not be so heavily prepared that you end up railroading your PCs. But by working through these bullet points first and then figuring out what do I need for those and just going through them. Notice, this wouldn't have been written until I was done with the music. Until I'm done with that, I'm not even going to write introduce whatever or I'm not even going to write number four which is detail out the current location and the PC's safe house area this one I'm not even going to write that because once I write that my mind creatively is thinking of the bullet points I need to draw a map I need to talk about you know make sure I have page references from the equipment guide in case they want to buy something from the general store what's the name of the dwarf that sells them the swords can they get magic there what are the questions they might ask so on and so forth you see how even on video, I can spend 45 seconds talking through those bullet points. But if I still need to create this map for the train fight, you're going to work through those bullet points too early. And then if they decide they want to fight, you find out that your map's not ready to go. Work linearly. Bullet point first. Wrangle in your freedom and flighty artist, artistic creative nature. And work step by step. And what will happen is at the end of it, you'll have something. And then what happens is your reactions to that. Take notes everywhere. Take notes. What happened in the fight? At the end, you know, blah, 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 blah. What happened? What happened at the end of this NPC? And then what you do is you save it. And then next time when I write two weeks later, which is whatever, the 29th or something, we met the new NPC, we met a new character, and you guys learned a little bit about the area that you're going to be hiding out in. Let's start. But now these next four bullet points you'll start talking through will be somewhat informed based on what your PCs did previously. I know that was kind of rambly. It's a lot to wrangle in, but I hope that you guys see the process and how this can help you get through your own session or just get through your own creative efforts. That's all I have for you folks today. Thanks everyone for watching and take care.